Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. So we are continuing our age estimation or person identification methods in forensic dentistry. So last two sessions were the dental age estimation through radiographical method and morphological method. The radiographic method was Dermigian method and the Gustafsson method of uh, dental age estimation which is a morphological as well as a histological method. Now uh, we have uh, the role of palatal rugae in person identification. So more than uh, age estimation, this palatal rugae pattern is used in person identification in a crime scene or a mass disaster. So uh, next sessions will be about uh, the role of third molars in dental age estimation, then the use of dental DNA in forensic dentistry and the histological method of dental age estimation. These all are very important topics for the exam because one or other questions will be definitely asked for your exam because the compulsory question will be there from forensic dentistry. So we'll start with the palatal rugae. So palatal rugae, uh, we know they are the ridges on the anterior part of the palatal mucosa on each side of the mid palatal raphe behind the incisive papillae. So it is a useful method of identification in identate individuals. So the rugae pattern on the uh, dead people's uh, maxilla or maxillary denture can be compared to the old dentures. Because these rugae, palatal rugae area, they are well protected by lips, cheeks, tongue, buccal pad of fat and teeth in uh, incident of fire and high impact trauma because it is well protected by these structures and it can resist decomposition to an extent and it is very unique uh, just like our fingerprint and seldom change happens with the shape due as the age grows and it reappears after trauma or surgical procedures so that are the peculiarities of palatal rugae pattern so we can classify the palatal rugae according to Lysel he classified the palatal rugae as primary rugae where we have more than 5 millimeter secondary rugae 3 to 5 millimeter fragmentary rugae 2 to 3 millimeter and rugae which is less than 2 millimeter will not be taken into consideration so how do we uh, make an analysis of this rugae pattern so as per thomas and van week they trace rugae patterns from dentures onto clear acetate and then superimposed these tracings on photographs or plaster models so they transfer it to uh, clear acetate and then superimposed this tracing on photographs of plaster models. Next group of scientists that is Limson and Julian. They analyzed rugae pattern by a computer software and they obtained around 97 percentage of accuracy whereas Otani and co-workers they suggest high accuracy can be obtained using straightforward visual comparison from dentures so Limson and Julian suggested software but the Otani and co-workers they suggested direct visual comparison okay so these are the patterns of palatal rugae they can be curved they can be wavy they can be straight and undermined and this entire process is known as rugoscopy sometimes the question will be like this that is rugoscopy this is nothing but identification using palatal rugae okay 
so in order to establish person's identity we can use a palatal rugae which is known as rugoscopy so what exactly we are doing is uh, we are checking the palatal rugae and its position its length its shape its direction and its unification to establish or to identify a person so the advantages are um, um one thing is the low cost and it does not require any complex uh, instruments and racial group identification is possible and sex determination is uh, quite easy with rugoscopy and palatal rugae did not change as a result of growth which remains stable until the oral mucosa at the death and the disadvantages are the changes that occurs from uh, with the orthodontic treatments extraction aging dentures and extreme finger sucking in infancy may hamper the identification process and we always need anti mortem data to compare with this post mortem data so only if we, if we have this anti mortem data this is useful and finally the palatal rugae pattern is unique to human beings as is uh, fingerprints so its use in uh, forensic identification is fairly justified so analysis of this palatal rugae pattern combined with other method is an important alternative and complementary technique for human identification and providing a significant contribution in cases of criminal investigation so that's all about palatal rugae and its role in uh, person identification that is forensic dentistry so next session will be about the role of third molars in dental age estimation okay so hope you understood it's very small topic i'll come up with that topic in the industry more thank you